Welcome everybody to the GG League season number two. It is semi-final number two as well. Team DD versus Balkan Bears. It's going to be a best of three series. Whoever wins this will be facing Vega Squadron in the final at 16 CT today. So this tournament will all in all end today unless something magical happens and they're gonna have to reschedule for unknown reasons. But should be a pretty damn excellent one. Unfortunately, BBC, they are lacking their so-called star player We He had some electricity problems, so Arise will be standing in for him. Definitely a capable player in his own right as well. But we are Hefla TV, your English coverage for this event. And I'm Coucher and I'm joined by Hefla Moog. Do you think yeah. they're just... Arise will just play Magnus and everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Uh, until Magnus got banned. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first ban. It's, it's just everybody knows Arise and his Magnus. <laughs> oh Jesus! I just tweeted it on my Twitter. I was like, "Yeah, Arise stands for, stands in for, for Weha. We fucking lost boys unless they draft a Magnus. What happens? <laughs> First ban Magnus. Oh, this is unfortunate. Well, oh, we're what having to a do? remake. So I thought that him not just uh, or them not banning out anything probably means that. There's gonna be like a stand-in, not the stand-in, but the remake. So we apparently spec, or at least so they said. So that is the reason for the remake that we has arrived. Supposedly, at least I don't see him in the lobby, so I don't know. But man, he's around somewhere. Well, so no Magnus burn, that's for sure. Yeah, gonna be a Meepo instead, just for the surprise, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, if he comes back, then the first ban is Meepo. That's pretty easy. I mean, yesterday, album sheet, I think in all three games for the BOC, they banned out Meepo and Broodmother as the first ones. It literally happened like every single game. BBC, they did win one game, and that was just off the top of an extremely farmed Wii Terror Blade. <laughs> So, looks like if you ban out Meepo and Broodmother, it works out rather well against BBC. Light of Heaven is missing though, the Russian caster. Yeah, he's still the waiting Russian. for the draft, man. He's like, why the fuck aren't they banning anything? <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he's drunk, I don't know. Well, everybody's ready at least, the teams are, are done. First pick tire, yeah, go, go. Light of Vodka. Does, does he even drink? He's Russian. No, but As, like, I, I think I mean not all Russians drink. I think Light of Heaven might be one of the ones not drinking. Does Dandy drink? Dandy? No, I don't think so. so Just a man. bit here and there. Actually, yeah, he does. Like on the Dreamhack, he did. Yeah, but that's probably uh, like racist. minimum amounts of alcohol or something. Then Dandy is the sort of man who doesn't need alcohol to be amused. Drink vodka, play vodka, man. Ba Baby Knight knows how it's done. He is an undercover just... Russian in Norway or something. Denmark, not Norway. What am I saying? Denmark, man. <laughs> Come on, Light of Heaven. Where are you? The girl on his stream. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Okay, so... He's offline on his Skype anyway, so I couldn't even tell him. Doesn't need to be disturbed while in the important business of casting Dota, man. <laughs> yeah, but you should have noticed by now that nothing is going on in the draft. But either way, we're going to load into game one, second lobby. And from first ban Magnus, because of Arise, we're going to go to a first ban Meepo. Well, it's it's most likely indeed. Did it? They may be one of the teams like, yeah, we can take on Wii's Meepo, no problem, guys, and then get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> that might happen. Do I mean, I every now and then, teams do like tend to challenge themselves, kind of, or maybe they really want to crush the enemy with letting them get their best heroes or something. Which, more often than not, is just a mistake. So let's see. Let's let the draft begin. Where's the Meepo? I want to see it. Right away. Well, BBC, they look to have the first banana one. Yeah, there's the Meepo ban. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that so. that was awfully surprising. Who who could have seen that one coming? Yep, 
I mean, they ban out the Prune Mother, they ban out the Meepo. Meepo just for the reason that we is gonna play it. Prune Mother for the reason that uh, Balkan Bears is utilizing the Prune Mother quite often at the moment. And, well, Rise and Baby Knight, well, Panda candidates banning them out. And I think that's that's pretty much, I mean, Rise, Storm could be something you wanna ban, but everything else is pretty much out now. So all the signatures, all the little star players, they got their piece now with the bans and we have to look for a normal draft. Well, DD Dota, they do start with a Tidehunter first pick and it's a really strong hero to have and also Balkan Bears, had it been still in the pool, they would have gone for it, I think, 100%. All three games yesterday, Tidehunter was the first pick for them. Tidehunter and then Disruptor to follow more often than not. So. But how, how did BBC play yesterday? They got, they got wrecked, didn't they? Well, they didn't get like super wrecked or anything, but they lost, yes. <laughs> They, well, they won one game though, they won the first game against Album Sheet, but then lost the second two. Yeah, Album Sheet beat them twice. And there was also some drama, I saw that on stream, but I wasn't paying too much attention. There was some drama going on between the teams, what was that about? Yeah, you there was casting? a player disconnected, uh, for an Album Sheet it is. So they had to pause, but Padrino had like no time left, because the best of three had gone for a little bit more than three hours by that time. Yeah. So they were like, I have no time, and they kept unpausing, and album sheet kept pausing, and they wanted like the admins to interfere and everything. So for like a solid five, six, maybe a couple extra minutes even for that, album sheet just played four versus five, but they were so far ahead at that point. And yeah, it was a they won. I, I know they, they they won four versus five against BBC. Well, well, well. No, I just saw some some drama and some some bad blood. I have to actually look at the vote to see the chat. But either way, um, that means like they're out of, yeah, yesterday they're out of the Battle of Central Europe, which means like out of a 30,000 tournament, now here they are in a relatively low reward tournament. I mean, GG League, I like the teams and everything, but of course the price pool is relatively low. Um, the first price equals 1,500, if I'm not mistaken. So that's quite a difference. I mean, 20,000 yesterday on, uh, at stake and today just like 1,500 or so. I mean, uh, to be honest, it's for a lot less play time as well here. It's just a single elimination playoff here. Whereas for the Battle of Central Europe, double level elimination, best of threes all the way. And not only that, in the group stages... But they came, but they came later into the tournament. It's not like they played the entire tournament. Oh, yeah, they didn't play the group stage at all. They, they failed in the group stage. They didn't qualify for Battle of Central Europe. And they came for the replacement of the Swedish team. Like Lions and Truck to Pair, they came together and have yeah, a new they, they setup. Yeah, they didn't have to play the hardest part then, like three exactly. best of twos per day. They, and they two came, they came in later back, in, like later into the tournament and had the chance to just scrap twenty thousand without playing through all the qualifiers and whatnot. That was a huge chance. But yesterday, against like losing against Album Sheet, they just gave it away. Either way, guys, that's enough gossip around the tier two scene. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's actually look into the draft and let's get. Back to Dota. We have the new buns here in the second bun stage. It's the Phoenix as well as the Disruptor. Ancient Apparition is coming out and well at the moment it seems like there are going to be some more supports being banned. They yeah, the Orgro. That was something I definitely waited for. The pick so far, well, Legion Commander and Shakira, which means a core Legion Commander. We have to see how they're going to lane this. If this is a safe lane Legion Commander and the Shakira. As for Balkan Vest, that might be even a mid Shakira, even though in the 6.8 pages that's not too popular. And on the other side, on the other side, we have Vengeful Spirit. Okay, that's also one of the most popular heroes at the moment. Like Ogre and Vengeful Spirit, like those two became even more popular than Scarab Mage, for example. The Vengeful is just so strong, especially against Legion Commander. You can swap out whoever gets the will, so you might just not lose the will just because of that one swap. But also having the minus armor, just having the ability to do Roshan is so damn great for you. You also have the Gush from the Tide Hunter, so even more minus armor coming out. Also Anchor Smash, purely physical damage. So just a nice pick, but I really like the TD Dota. They have completely done their homework. They have banned out like four of the heroes that you would see Balkan Bears pick up pretty much every single draft. Yep, and well, so far they take quite some time here. The normal time and of course the reserve time is ticking down. Balkan Bears, they're usually quite fast on that draft, but well, even exotic drafts sometimes need some time. I mean, it's, it's hard for them since, like I said, all the heroes that they usually play have been banned out. Phoenix, the go-to hero for them, as is the Disruptor. I think Disruptor might be the hero that gets like through the pool most often. Yeah. But then again, they pick it like as a second pick, so it's not that easy to actually ban it out. But Centaur will be the pick for BBC. Definitely some aggression coming out. 
And this means that this Legion Commander is maybe gonna be just full out jungle or most likely in the mid lane. Yep. Absolutely. So we have our offering candidate. They swap to relatively normal picks, but I'm curious. I mean, at the moment it seems like Miss like Team DD they are prepared. I mean, Balkan Bears they are. I don't know a team that gets a lot of attention just because they started like three months ago with their crazy drafts, and ever since like they climb in popularity, especially on the shoulders of We, but also Patrino. But well. Now that everything has been banned out, we have to swap into something normal. DD, they're well prepared for sure. I mean, they knew exactly what to ban against PBZ. Not that it's like, I don't know, some, some crazy skill required for that. But still, like the question is now banning one thing or banning like certain set of heroes is one thing and then actually going for a draft that still beats PBC is the other thing. Well, they are taking their little sweet ass time there with the pick here. Skyrock Mage could be possible for themselves. Also, to the, the, the deny it to Balkan Bears, who could easily go for it. I mean, Duel into Mystic Flare, definitely a good combination. Yeah. Also, it's like, Ancient Seal into the Centaur, Double Edge. Lots of oh. damage there, but whoa. No, they gotta pick Skyrock Mage. They gotta pick Skyrock Mage, because otherwise that doesn't really work out. I mean, Faceless Void, and if they don't pick it, then Team TD might go for it. And they also have, both of the teams have at the moment a synergy hero for Skyrock Mage. Legion Commander plus Skyrock Mage works. Void plus Sky of Mage works, but they are not going for it. They go for a Terra Blade, and that's quite interesting because, okay, now we know that Shakira is in a support role, the center still on the offline, that's a mid Legion commander and a Terra Blade safe lane, and now we have one more support. If Team DD doesn't go for the Sky of Mage, that might still be the Sky of Mage on Balkan Bear's side. It might be. For DD, they could also go for something like a Witch Doctor, for example, or probably they want to get as much wave, not wave clear, but like AOE kind of damage if they can, just to deal with the Terror Blade Illusions later on in the game if need be. But for BBC it might be a Terror Blade mid lane as well, depending on who's gonna go up against that. They have been running the Terror Blade mid lane I think the most times when I've seen him be playing it. So DD Dota, what do they even go for? Do they go for something like a Puck now for the mid lane, just taking an extremely aggressive route with this? No, I still think that the Sky of Mage would, would be awesome, like you have Nice amplification for both Titan and as well as Vengeful Spirit. All of them could go for a roaming couple. The the synergy with uh, the Faces Void is there. So I still vote for Sky of Mage. It, it seems for me the logical conclusion, but apparently they think quite some time about it. I guess the longer they think about it, the more unlikely it is that we're going to see the Sky of Mage. But they have to ban it on either side. Like if they don't go for Sky of Mage right now because they want to secure something else, then the gamble starts and it might still come as a fifth pick. And they go for Enigma. So and big fat like combo. combo. It's not a wombo combo actually. Like, I mean, it's 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 something you can nicely chain. EG actually did that in a TI, if you remember correctly. The uh the faceless void into uh, the Enigma. But here they even have one more. I mean this is this is void chronosphere plus the ravage plus the enigma. So in theory they can initiate with the chrono Follow up by a black hole for like for whatever is still in or out there. At, to finish off, they can go for the ravage or put it the all the other way around, like ravage as a starter, then into the chronosphere or a black hole into chronosphere or the chronosphere just used to keep those people who are not in the black hole out there. So there's a crazy amount of I don't know options how they could do it. To be honest, it feels a bit like overkill. And both of the teams, they're not ban even banning out Scarab Mage at the moment. It's Lish and Zeus. Okay. I, I do like the Zeus ban just because TD Dota could have easily gone for a mid lane Zeus, and that kind of crushes a Terror Blade just because Terror Blade doesn't have too much mana or too much health to work with early on before he gets like a Skadi or something going. So I like the Zeus ban. Lich ban is kind of like so so, but I guess TD Dota at this point don't have the craziest amount of magical or physical damage. I mean, once they get the Mask of Madness, Faces Void can start doing quite a lot, but the Lich Armor would be rather annoying to just push into True. and everything. But still, I'm, I'm really worried about I mean, right now I'm looking at the Tarot Plate, and what you have for a Tarot Plate oh, is pretty easy. All you have to do on a Tarot Plate is stun him, kill him. And at the moment, we are looking at the Black Hole, we're looking at the Chronosphere, we're looking at the Titan, the Plasma Magic Missile follow-up stun, so everything is there. Of course, the Omni Knight pick now on the fifth slot makes it even easier for Balkan Bears to... I don't know, maybe somehow circumvent all these big fat ultimates with the repel. It doesn't help you against the Chronosphere or the Black Hole, it helps you just against the Ravage and Eventual Spirit stun. Still, 
Like, if that Faceless Void just focused that Terror Blade, like, what's coming afterwards? There is not much damage coming, especially early into the game when the Legion Commander doesn't have too much damage stolen. I, I really don't, don't feel this draft, but the Sniper now, that makes it quite interesting. So, the Sniper staying really far, far away, and Black Hole, Chronosphere, and <laughs> the Ravage in front. It's it's very interesting approach by by DD. I like the draft way better, but I think it's a bit overkill. I mean, the sniper? <laughs> Do you mean that one is overkill? The, the, the sniper is just like super ranged hero that like can benefit from all these ultimates, just holding them all in place. But like I think just the big ultimates they're overkill because yeah, the I mean, problem I, is with this, I completely in theory, agree with that. It's just because so many times when you see too many big ultimates on a team, that team yeah, it's just never fails. really working out. It's it's never working out, like for some reason. Like one should think, wow, they got so many big fat ultimates. The ultimates we like always cheer for and whatnot, black holes, huge ravages and whatnot. But in the end, somehow those teams always fail. But either way, let's let's just really fast introduce them here. On the dire side, we're gonna have Baby Knight playing that sniper. He's gonna go mid. On the offline, we have Ace playing the Titan Hunter, and then the tri lane, or rather, sort of a semi tri lane because Rice is gonna be in the jungle mainly, but probably rotating in for the Malafai stun. We have Rice on the Enigma, and Eventual Spirit is being played by Yobo. Last but not least, then is the Faces Void played by Blan. And the for Blan. BBC Hockey playing the Legion Commander, leaving Solitude on Jakiro as they're going for a dual offlane. We once again playing the mid lane Terror Blade, and the last two will be Levy on the Omni Knight and Padrino on that safe lane Centaur. Yep, and at the moment, like DD, heavy shift towards the north of the map, like top prone is probably what they want to go for. But also on the other side, we have Haki and Solitude there in position. And to be honest, if there's a force point, Ice Blast, uh, Ice, pa Ice Blast, I say, Ice Path then I don't think anyone is going to die here in that region. But at the moment, no, they're all hiding back. Seems like they don't want to secure that rune. Bottom, however, I think that's pretty much a guaranteed rune for BBC. They're already in position, and AC rather blocks his uh, creep wave than going for that rune. So let's see what's actually happening. DD, give both runes away. That's unexpected. You yeah, would have expected them to just guard the top rune as they're going to run for a defensive trialing kind of thing anyway. But it's a bounty rune, I mean, not too horrible, so it's just an extra gold, extra XP gonna be nice. But this dual lane, offlane dual lane that is, from BBC, it's going to be pretty damn strong against what DD has, just because Enigma, he won't be able to help out at all, most likely. So, Vengeful Spirit, he can only do so much on lane with a faceless voice, who isn't the greatest just laning hero against harassment coming out from the Chakiro's liquid fire constantly. Also, overwhelming odds from Legion Commander, so I think this dual offlane is pretty smart from BBC. Well, we have, we have to see. Like, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of the dual lanes here, but maybe they can actually make it work out. The My biggest worry, my biggest fear of this game is still the Terra Blade. Like, getting him through, it will be hard. It definitely will be hard. Like, this Baby Knight in the mid should be having a decent time against uh, Wii. Like, whenever Metamorphosis is down, and that's quite often the case, since it's a relatively long cooldown of like 140 seconds, so I don't see why this this shouldn't work out. Well, it's definitely going to be hard if you have so many melees up against that crazy just ultimate lineup of DD. But if the Omni Knight somehow can get himself an Aghanim Scepter, for example, it's going to be so huge for them because there's a lot of physical damage to come from DD with the Sniper right clicking away, as well as the Faceless Void, of course, as well. So if you can get the Aghanims to make sure Guardian Angel connects on everybody, it might buy them enough time to just actually win a fight during that duration. But as a support Omni Knight getting an Aghanims is gonna be just ridiculously hard though. Baby Knight taking a lot of harassment mid lane, we wants to go for it, gets headshotted up by Baby Knight. The Baby Knight will turn the harassment around onto Wii instead. Doesn't even have yep. a single point in to take aim, doesn't have the extra range, but he's gonna be fine. That's a, that's exactly what I've been talking about. Sure we can go for something aggressive on the sniper, but like Baby Knight was like, yo, I, I don't I don't even know what you want and he was just going for it. Now like with Shrapnel, there's no way for Wii to actually get close to that creep wave. So like he's gonna miss so many of those hits. It's mm, I'm not sure. Either way, two minute rune here actually goes invisibility to the Shakira. And now the sniper has to be careful here. If he stays in mid, that's of course at least some harass damage on him. If he slowed by Wii, we might even see a kill. But at the moment, Baby Knight is, is well aware of that fact. We actually got that bounty rune. That was by the Omni Knight. Levy got it. Yeah. Coucher.
Ah, never mind. <laughs> okay, never mind. I just got the message to keep going. Okay, so, I'm back now. Either way. It's fine. <laughs> Had to get some important information about the other house we have. Oh, mid lane though, baby knight. Came back just in time. Although I don't think he's gonna die here or is he the slows? Are there gonna be enough? A few more right clicks from me. Never mind, he survives. All is fine. Yep, it's pretty much fine. This is the first metamorphosis that came out, and I was just panicking because I thought like, oh, maybe I have to take over the stream because you just disconnected. That's that's why I was so scared. <laughs> now they're installing some stuff like washing machines and well, pretty much the entire kitchen like furniture oh. to the other house, so or to the house next to us, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, is busy with washing machines. Okay, that's perfect. Either way, top like I don't like that the vengeful spirit is so so passive at the moment because like the void is not getting too much. Twelve and five here on that safe lane. I really expected more to come out of him, but at the moment he's just getting spammed down. And Haki is also going for the overwhelming odds build, which means like at some point, unless you really are lucky with the backtrack, you're gonna just get tons of damage here. Staying in lane is gonna be harder with each and every level that's coming out on this dual lane. In the mid, we just saw it like that little go on. The sniper he didn't die but it was pretty close so we have to see how baby Knight is gonna do at the moment he's going for a bottle and it's four minute rune time but again we have well this time it's the first time we see actually dd going for the runes i definitely like that tight hunter he found the bounty rune on top we have a regeneration which they give to baby Knight, and that's definitely good good news because he can spam those shrapnels all the time and then completely refresh if he's level six he can even spam all the shrapnel plus the assassin at the top. might go down for first blood. Pressed attack comes out. No magic missile yet. Lobo just can't get close enough. Although I don't think Solitude will be able to make it out. Trying to eat his way through the trees. Pretty smart plays. But magic missile, Lobo. Never mind. Not gonna go down first. But he's gonna die in the end anyway. Or is it Bash Lord plan? Gonna go for hockey. My freaking god. The time walk over as well. One more bash. One more right click. Never mind. Don't even need the bash. That was beautiful. Played here by DD. Like that. <laughs> That self actually used on the Vengeful gave him exactly the HP he needed to survive that last hit. I was actually kind of surprised that he didn't go in one direction, that he like was sticking around, but in the end he was lucky because Haki just didn't get that last hit in. So yeah, nice start here for DD, getting the first blood and two kills on top of it. Like that was kind of unexpected, but the way... I don't know, the way Solitude ran there that was prone to sort of fail unless he somehow gets, I don't know, a TP out, but the magic missile was still there, ready and armed. And well, not only that, Rise, he's level 6 already. Oh, yes. oh, wow, okay. Baby Knight, that was a melee assassinate, just just going for we Too low HP, and he just got it. I mean, the assassinate damage, right, even level 1, is too high for a Terra Blade. The Terra Blade's health pool just straight out sucks, really. Although he has killed Sunder on level 6, just wasn't able to use it in that case. But yeah, Enigma, he's also level 6, almost level 7 already. Absolute free farm so far in the jungle. 37 last hits. Of course, jungle last hits are not as great. Oh, Ravage bot no lane. They're gonna go for Patino. Might get the kill. Magic stick keeps him alive, but the magic missile gets the kill in the end anyway. So, 4 4 0. What a start, Baby Knight. Even makes it out from V's, V's clutches in the mid lane. Man, 4 0. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. Levy was just going to the left. I, I guess he just wanted to do something there, so he was not in range for Purification or the Repel. Both of it would have helped him for sure, but it didn't really happen. So DD, they're starting really nice in that game. And now we have the first corner of the game with the Midnight Pole. Solitude top before his cast even dying. So this is 5-0 and for DD. Balkan Bears, it's just not working out at the moment. Ace, however, uh, do they go for him? I mean, with Hoostom, double edge combination and a level 3 Purification soon, that might be enough burst damage on Ace, but you can't really lock him down for all that time, and he already has the movement we speed. Might be in trouble again. Gets the Sunder onto Lobo, though, but Lobo will not go down. Ice Buff, he actually runs into it still. Not gonna be enough damage. We He was dangerously close to death at that point. Venture Spirit even tried to back off from the Sunder, but the Sunder's range was. or it felt like a little bit higher than it maybe was, but. Bottom lane, yeah. Ace. He had the Invis Ruin, so they couldn't even properly go for him after all. Just that's that's uh, Sunder was lucky actually. If Baby Knight would have just assassinated him there, like before he could reach the uh, the Vengeful Spirit, that might have been a kill. But oh, do we see something happening? Top? No. If that was a duel or the mana was there on the duel on Haki, that might have been it. But at the moment, they just go for the minus armor and, and all the right clicks. But at the moment, it's not really working. But their black hole, the black hole is coming. Both of them are in. They're gonna focus on Haki first. The question is, where are the bashes? Oh, there we have Maleficent. Should be it. Blan actually going for Solitude as well, but at the moment Solitude feels like more or less turning it around. But no, the range is not there anymore. And in the mid, we have the Sniper again soloing We 
plus getting the tower. This is 7 and 0. Oh. Jesus Christ, Balkan Bears at the moment getting a heavy beating. Th this is absolute domination what we're seeing at this point. The good thing is that they still have an Omni Knight, which really hasn't done anything so far. I mean, that's not the good thing that he hasn't done anything, of course, but once he hits that level 6, maybe just maybe with the repel and the purifications, they can try to turn some fights around. Had the Omni Knight, for example, TP top lane, one purification there, faces Void would have died immediately. So. Maybe he should be carrying TPs and assisting other lanes, I don't know, but so far... Yeah, I think with, with some rotation we might have seen a different outcome, at least getting a revenge kill, but at the moment that's just not working out. I mean, top the tower is most likely going to fall since Plan has to go back to the fountain, but we have a rotation towards uh, bottom. Pachinio is there farming on the center, but oh my god, that's not going to last for too long. Like, there's so many stuns on him, even the Ravage use, that Ravage was complete completely unnecessary he was by that time of the ravage already on like 300 hp and the assassinate was not even on him yet and that equals 355 damage plus three heroes around him to right click but sure is he really felt like ravaging him sure that's like 200 percent safe but on the mid look at it plan going for we and at the moment even the tower is gonna help and he's gonna die before he can sunder anyone make that nine and oh plus a tier one tower bottom jesus christ And Coucher is gone again. In the meantime, we also had like top. The tower was gone. Haki, I think, got credit for it, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, nobody claimed that tower. So but still, you... 9 and 0. Oh, like, looking at the crafts whenever Coucher is like here and listening to me, like, it's 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 kind of crazy. And I think DD, they. Yeah, they're just gonna follow up on, on Roshan right now. They have minus armor off the Wave of Terror, plus the medallion already on. Who got that? Yeah, never mind. The Vengeful Spirit got it. Ace is actually tanking for quite a while. Now the Idolans will do the trick. They should replicate soon, but Roshan is probably earlier of... No, never mind. There they replicate. So enough targets to tank Roshan. Roshan on the, like a third, and he's going down. I think the Sniper is going to get this Aegis. Because Bland was not even around. And probably the best carrier for the Aegis as well, just because he's pretty squishy, but able to output a lot of damage when he's alive. So Aegis is going to be pretty excellent for him, and looking at the Vengeful, I wanted to say that, man, he's pretty farmed for a support, but he's the lowest farmer on their team, still, I mean, that, that just goes to show how great things are going, I mean, he has the same farmer as a safe lane farming centaur, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, 9 and 0 at the moment, 10 minutes, oh, and they might find Haki here, there is the magic missile, but where is the follow-up, for now they're stunned, there is the assassinate, but, well, he's getting the heal through, but they, <laughs> the neutrals are helping. <laughs> They're definitely on DD's side. I mean, it's 10 and 0, but of course, for the last one, nobody is really getting credit for it. Well, Baby Knight, at least, is just going to come in and take the tower. It's so ridiculous that from level 3, take aim, you can outrange a tower as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's easy. I mean, tier 1 tower, there's no backdoor protection. The sniper, if he's rotating anyway, why, why not just go in for it? But at the moment, he decided just go for that siege creep and, well. But you can only do that at, at daytime, though. Like, at nighttime, you don't have... The vision on well, the you tower. can That's shrapnel cool. left during night time and then just yeah. get vision pretty much. But... Yeah, of course, shrapnel. But that costs mana. And at the moment, he wants to keep that, that mana. Because he doesn't have mana at the moment for shrapnel and assassinate. And just in case someone is coming top, he wants to have that assassinate. So it's the right choice not to use the shrapnel. Man, there's a mech flying out for Ryze as well now in the Enigma. Gonna make it even harder for BBs to actually go for a fight. Haki, unfortunately, doesn't have the blink dagger and won't probably have it for quite some time still. So, they're just doing whatever they can. Probably losing tier 1s is not all that bad. Solitude wants to come in from the side. Ice buff is there. They even glyph up the tower. But, for a second I thought like he might get jumped once he went for the ice buff because everybody knew where this he This actually is. might happen because the Chronosphere is there. We have the time walk and the Chronosphere. So, if, if any anyone of BBC shows up, we have an easy kill. We have an assassinate on our hands. Still, we have the Enigma with the Midnight Pulse and even on level 1, the 3% uh, HP drain is pretty sick. Like, all this in combination, right now, Blan is just waiting for anyone to come to the defense of this tower, and Haki is still around, so why not? Okay, so Levi, he's on the bottom side trying to just get some levels, get some farm, has his arcane boots now. He has a lot of mana to sustain his spells, yet so far, <laughs> he pretty much hasn't used a single one of them, and Blan now, he's gonna go for Wii, Chronosphere does come out, Levi should be enough, but there's the Ravage, no repel quite yet, just went for the purification, repel is there, but he's gonna get bashed, can he get the Sunder off? Nope, yep, he gets it onto Ace, he's fine, Ace will go down, or will he- No, the black hole onto free! The turnaround is real, Shrapnel, Anchor Smash as well, my freaking god, they are all alive, and well... <laughs>
That was the best black hole I've seen in a long time. Perfect timing. Ace was just a second away from dying. Really, just a second away from dying. That black hole. And that's exactly what I said. This was a perfect channel. Like, we had the Ravage for a previous fight. Then we had the Chronosphere and the black hole just to finish it off. Like, the big fat ultimates come in here. And at the moment, BBC, they don't even manage to get Ace here killed. That would have been like a 12-1 or 13-1 score. At least something, but no. It's just not happening. DD, they're not giving away a single thing. And I, I was really hoping that BBC can get that one kill from somewhere at least, but at this point, just look at the network. Sniper is almost doubling the Terror Blade. And Terror Blade, although he's a pretty fast farmer, if you're getting this shot down and you don't have the space to farm in, it's just not all that great for you. Maybe he shouldn't have even gone for the tower, just stay in the jungle, try to farm up there. Although the rest of the four, they are so underfarmed that they can't accomplish anything. And let me know, he's gonna get stunned up as well. Can they take him down? Never mind, repel will be enough to save him, but it came extremely close to him dying. Oh well, but oh my god, there's the swap here. He, he was going for the assassinate, but now the assassinate is actually coming here on levy end. It is enough. <laughs> that's, that's, that assassinate is level 2, I think. Yeah, that's 500 damage. That's just too much. And he spent the heal actually on... The Legion Commander before, which, yeah, was then his own HP lacking. Well, we have we at the moment trying to desperately farm somewhere. Like, it's not too bad considering how the game goes at the moment. He got Aquilas done, he got PT do done, 600 gold on top of it. But he should be, I don't know, right now he, he should be like 2k more on the net worth if he had like decentish farm in the mid. But at the moment, well, we have Petrinho farming on that center, but yeah. They saw him and they just steal his farm instead. Now, what's like Falcon Bear's way to come back? I guess Padrino is semi close to the Blink Tiger, but for a safe lane centaur, it's just horribly slow for you. I mean, it's rather slow for even an off lane centaur up against a tri lane, to be honest, in most cases. So, I mean, what, what's the comeback for them? They don't have their Blink Tigers yet for the Blink Duel or anything, and even if they go for a duel, they may, may just straight out lose it. Uh, I, at the moment, I just don't see any potential for a comeback. The big fat ultimates are up, except for Black Hole. We have another 50 seconds, but we have the Chronosphere and we have the Ravage. And the Ravage is also, like, disguised at the moment. We have the invisibility on the Tide Hunter. He's just waiting for initiation. And he also also has a Blink Dagger. Oh, he's, he's probably going to blink and now is it, that is Isaki. Never mind. Assassinate got cancelled. Thought he's going to go for just an harassment. No, he's, he's just putting it on, like, all the time. He wants to, like, I don't know, bait it out or something. Like, Baby Knight is faking it all the time. This is more or less really it's just some I guess some he wants nuisance. to just bait out the repel of Levi's Omni Knight. Uh, so that, <laughs> that's just a tower down, nothing done by BBC. They were trying to just split push and split farm. We just farming up the enemy jungle, the safest place to be. It's probably true as well, but they're losing all their outer towers. I'm surprised though that they don't go for a fight because like Ace was there, Blink Dagger and uh, the Ravage, like they wanted to maybe here and there bait out the, the Repel and then wait till it fades. But nope, they're not going for it. I think DD could could be right now really aggressive with their big fat ultimates, getting the tower plus like two kills and falling back till the big ultimates are ready again. That would definitely work out. But at the moment, DD, they're just fine pushing the towers like step by step. Plan, however, is coming in. And there is the Chronosphere. It only hits on two, but we have to assassinate on Levy and kill secured. There's the Ravage just to get the second kill secured. And now even Haki in trouble. There's a follow up stun plus the bashes of the void. Easy going. Tier two tower plus three. And nothing else was achieved on Balkan Bear's side this day. Man, BBC should maybe just concede before this rape gets turned into murder, man. Because this, this is just horrible to watch. 18-0. I mean, they got rather close to kill, killing Ace once. But, but that was the closest they've gotten to a kill. <laughs> I mean, we was trying to at least, like... Uh, creep skip at one point got one creep away from them I think with the illusion. Yeah, but they don't they don't care at the moment like they really don't care Even though back to production should kick in at some point But oh we have a nice initiation here by the center got a double who stomp and some uh, some damage on rise But in the end it won't be enough even we in like the metamorphosis It's it's not scary enough absolutely not scary enough, but rise. Oh, he has to be careful That's the first kill for BBC. We have to celebrate this rise might be the next one So they finally struck back and baby knight now in a position where he has to run ASAP. I mean, <laughs> Enigma made it even easier for them to get the kill. He popped the soul ring as well before they jumped. Yeah, that him. was kind of strange. They should have just ran, in my opinion. But well, two kills for BBC. Like definitely value kills here. <laughs> they need wow, the 4k XP, 3k gold swing from this. <laughs> 
It's just yep. two kills. I mean, if you look at the XP craft, like Didi was leading with 12k at like experience, and oh, we have another goal here. We is found by the sniper, and there's the Sunder. Like suddenly, Vengeful Spirit, you don't have any HP, and do we see a duel? Does he wait for the duel? No, he's just finishing off by the assassinate here on the Legion Commander, and that's pretty much it. They even tried to bottle him up. We tried to play with him there, but it didn't work, and now, ah, oh, the hoof stump, so close, but it didn't really happen. Well, they do get free kills, so that's a good sign, and the funny thing is, though, that BBC, they got more from killing off a support Vengeful than DD got from killing off a Legion Commander. But Legion Commander has a blink now, they have the double blink with Centaur and Legion, so they can definitely set up kills on the squishier heroes. Even Enigma isn't all that tanky, well, after you've used the mech already, of course. But Enigma, I would expect him to go for a BKB next. Maybe a blink there, although I would probably like a BKB more, just to make sure that nothing, like literally nothing, cancels your black hole. I guess you can get dueled, but getting close enough for a I duel and not getting sucked out. in is hard. So, BBC, they gotten some kills. They haven't lost their racks yet, so not all is lost. Although, it's going to be extremely hard for them to just come back. Okay, Heflamok is lagging out, I guess. I heard like a couple of words from him, but I'm gonna try to just recall on Skype. Maybe that will work, maybe not. Hungarian internet. And, oh, well, in the meantime, Roshan is going on, and oh god, the Chronosphere, no! The TP out from Levi just before the Chrono landed. Well, I guess it's not that big of a deal since they get Roshan anyway. And Chrono, well, it's not all that necessary for them to actually win a fight. It's definitely would be good, but I don't think it's, like, a requirement for them. But looking at the farm now, at least Terrorblade isn't gonna be surpassed by Eventual Spirit anymore, so that's a good sign for sure. And I'm getting a call back. Yeah, I don't know what was what's wrong with my internet, but at the moment, whoa, Levy is just found in the same second I joined back into the game, so nothing changed when I, I kind of know disconnected. Everything's still going the way of DD, but I don't know, strange internet today. Oh, indeed it is, indeed it is. Just messing with some stuff as well. Okay, we'll be fine now. But Padrino and Solitude, they're split pushing. Liquid Fire is maxed out as well. Even in the Yule Scepter, picked up on Shakira somehow. But Ace, will he blink in? Blink in, pops the Ravage just for Solitude, I mean, I, I guess they're fine, getting a kill, you'll set her by some time. They stand up a Terrorblade Illusion, and oh, the swap back onto Padrino, can he escape this magic missile? We'll keep him in place. And, okay, then, that that pushing just <laughs> did it work out. No, nope, three, two, even, two, man, three, two, two. Instantly repelled and instantly punished. Like, this is not even fun to watch anymore. I mean, this is... I mean, the free kills at the moment really just happened because, like, DD was in a position where they should not be. At the moment, Enigma even having the Blink Dagger initiation, so he gets a huge thumbs up from me because, like, you rarely see Enigmas nowadays with Blink Daggers. But we have a Chrono already in five seconds, a Black a Hole after that, so in theory, they could just keep on going in mid, especially if they find Wii. That should do the trick. But Rice at the moment, he might scout it out, or at least they see that the camp has been farmed. Let's see. Blan has to come in. He has to open with the Chronosphere so that Enigma can do like a really safe positioning. And if PBC did not have a Terror Blade in this game, I'm almost positive that they would have GG'd out already. Oh, uh, the, the score, by the way. The yeah, score, man, that, that's what I'm saying. 3 2 2. 3 2 2. And now in the mid, we might actually see something destroying this score. Blan at the moment being open on, but. He nope, backtracks the really purification as well, man. What a player. Yeah. It's, it's so much skill, so much skill involved. <laughs> Keep the score up, boys. Keep the score up. But th this game cannot possibly end with this score unless BBC, they don't take a fight and let the racks fall and then GG out. But I don't see that happening. Well, I, at the moment, I just don't see it happening happening anyway like yesterday i already said it like i'm known as always like the pessimistic caster like similar to like mr emo draskal but this game like sorry but i just can't find anything positive at the moment for bbc i don't see the comeback potential because of that big fat ultimates and so far dd they haven't done any crazy mistakes unless they really i don't know f up then I just don't see this happening. I just don't. But let's see. At the moment, Balkan Bears, they hang on 
to this game. Baby Knight, he has to be a bit careful that he doesn't get initiated upon, but then again, he's protected by the Aegis, so he works at the moment just as a bait, and in the meantime, Shrapnel is just going for the Rex. So, this actually might end as 3 to 2 if they just keep on sieging the Rex like this with the Aegis and no fight will happen. Because if they lose 3 Rex this way, there's no way that they're gonna come back. But there's a smoke, DD, they want to come in from behind. Probably yeah, the smartest decision they could go for. If they can get the duel onto Tidehunter, for example, stop the Ravage, it's gonna be huge, but can they get it? But Baby Knight already. Oh, never mind. There's a duel, but instantly Black Hole and hit the Chronosphere at the same time. The timing is actually bad, but now Baby Knight with the Ravage, they are helping on it. Jesus Christ, two for one trade at the moment, but Bland, he actually might die, but he's going aggressively for the Chakiro. It doesn't really work out so far now. Baby Knight, he doesn't care. Right clicks on the Chakiro. He has a goddamn Scotty, so there's no way to get away at the moment. But Rice being in trouble here. We still focusing on him, but now he's being stunned. And Baby Knight, I think he's going to lose his Aegis, but we is going to lose his life for it. Exactly. They kill each other at the same time. Only problem is Baby Knight has definitely advantage there. Instant buyback by Wii. But, uh, I don't know, he has no metamorphosis, so he can't really defend anything here. Well, they're still not calling GG though, because I guess Terrorblade can be that big of a core, although... Not with this kind of farm. He was looking like decent-ish being number 3 in farm before this fight, but suddenly with the buyback, with the death, he's back to being number 5. So, if you're just... If you have less farm on a Terrorblade than 4 of the enemy heroes, you know just that probably you can come back. I mean, there's always a slight chance. Let's say DD, they just start going as one, just one against three, one against five all the time or something like that, and just keep throwing as hard as they possibly can. But I'm yeah, not too sure still, if their arms like, are strong enough for such throwing, man. No, no, absolutely not. I, I don't think so. But Ace in the, in the mid might be in trouble. If there's a slow on him, that might be definitely worth it. And now there's initiation here. Purification hits, at uh, Pacino, before he gets anything out, oh my god, the ultimate is more or less just for the retreat. I thought they're gonna go even deeper in, but that would have been like plan even helping. If it drags out a tiny bit more, that would have been even a chronosphere in 10 seconds. So, nope, you really don't want to go in there. So, 5 to 27. At least we see they've gotten some kills. <laughs> okay, so who's even died on DD's side? Faceless Void once, Vengeful twice. Okay, so Sniper is the only one who hasn't died, and Vengeful has died twice. <laughs> 12, yeah, Vengeful anyway. Look look at the net worth charts. I think they should kick him from the team because at the moment he doesn't manage to stay on the top half of the net worth charts. So far it's it's nicely sorted into green and red on two sides. But yeah, he's screwing up big time. He still has, well, 2k or 2.8k What, a bad, or support, what a bad support doesn't outfarm a terror blade. <laughs> but now yeah. Solitude, gonna get solo crown out. Easy kills. He gets solo tooted. But, to, to be honest, I think Lobo, unless he's some other guy who is usually playing for DD under another name, he should be the only one who is an actual stand-in for them. What, so, the Void? Uh, no, the Vengeful. The ve he is a stand-in? Yeah, he is actually a stand-in. I have never... No, they're all stand-ins because the entire no, team... No, no, but Lobo is the only one announced. that I haven't seen before. I mean, otherwise it's just because they don't have like the name changes by Valve yet or something. But Ace, oh, oh, they're gonna jump, the duel comes out, they're gonna win it as well. Yes! Finally. Success. Finally, definitely a good play, but do we see a turnaround? I mean, there is a black hole. No, never mind, there's not a black hole. 15 seconds, but we have... Oh my god, there's the swap on Wii. He still has a Sunder, so we're gonna see the Sunder on Baby Manite. Never mind bashed. that. He got bashed. First hit bash, yeah. I believe, came out from the faceless. Levy will be next. I <laughs> can't even get off a purification, oh my freaking god. Those clicks are absolutely real. Now on the center we have pretty much the same here. Last will is just a double edge and a stun, but that's about it. They just die, like at the moment Blan, this face is void. He doesn't even look that scary on paper. I mean, you look at his items, but just the hits are real. Just same for, for the sniper. It's just crazy. I mean, that sniper at the moment, like... Ouch, it, it really hurts. This is just 26 minutes in and the right clicks. They're just too much, like purification... On all that stuff, it doesn't even get through. And if it gets through, you don't even notice the difference in HP. They're so, going down anyway. Since the free 2 2 dream is dead, I think the next is for the sniper to get 666 six, six gold per minute, probably. He's sitting at 600 oh, at the come moment. Come on, now, now you're just pulling the numbers together here. No, the rest, I've seen Mushi get 666 six, six gold per minute twice <laughs> in one tournament. <laughs> the Thailand Championship, he got it twice. I, I was like, what? It cannot be, man, Mushi. <laughs> man, yesterday in the cast with, with Grandes, I saw the first game in my casting career with a team having actually uh, 42 or 45k experience and goal advantage. I tweeted it as well. 
but I only took a screenshot of the experience craft. But it was just nuts. 40k advantage. I've never seen that before. That was uh, Virtus Pro Polar versus uh, Hellraisers. Oh yeah, Hell I Raises saw a little bit of that game. It was just. It, it was sad. Defeat. It was really, really sad. Like, it, it, it reminded me of this game, actually. Because, I mean, BBC is not that far behind. At the moment, we are talking about 20k on both crafts. But we're only 27 minutes in, and BBC is holding on to it. Usually, BBC is a team that says, like, no, guys, uh, we just go for the next one. And to be honest, right now, I definitely feel this is one of those games where you rather tap out. Sure, they managed to get here and there a strike with Haki initiating, getting that duel of Platemay on, and then the burst of the center Warner. That is Hoofstone plus the double edge combination with the purification right on top of him by Levy. But this is it. This is enough to burst one down. But afterwards, there is, like, oh. So much waiting for you that you don't even make the retreat. Especially if you have Baby Knight hitting you with Sangha, Yasha and Eye of Skadi. Running away is pretty much impossible. Malefis, Swap. I don't even want to continue this list because it's just nuts. This is all without ultimates. This is just like their chasing ability. Oh, oh man, they can't even fly and plant. They smoked into him, but they didn't. I mean, Haki, he went for the Presti attack before just blink dueling. Blink duel, I think, would have been fast enough because Faces Void didn't react too fast himself. But he got to blink out, time walk to follow, and now there's a four man smoke. They have the black hole, they have the ravage as well. Even Blanc will be coming back. Everything is locked and loaded. They just wait for someone to unload. Obviously, you want to have multiple targets at the moment, but can best they are quite decent ish spread out. But now in the mid wall, we might find level. He releases that smoke. Oh, and they go instantly for what they want. They want to get rid of this of the Shakira, and that's pretty much it. If they're not too careful, Levy is going to even fall with them next. Plan is still around, and well, it's actually good that he is not with the team, so he can actually wait till Balkan Bears like croup up, go on for something, and then goes for a chrono from like some sort of wraparound position. But at the moment, DD. They're really playing this like the TI final, super carefully and everything, just because Roshan is up, but I think they don't even need Roshan. But sure, with Roshan it's even easier. Yeah, we have Terror Mist as well, so Roshan will be a little bit slower, but Monkey King Varda now on Baby Knight. Oh my freaking god, it's kind of a preemptive thing against a Butterfly Terror Blade later on, but when the hell would the Terror Blade even get the Butterfly with the amount of farm he's getting? It would be like 40 minutes in or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I mean, we just, I don't know, just glance the 10k net worth at the moment while the sniper is almost doubling him up. I mean, not quite, eight, 18k at the moment. But now he's, of course, equipped uh, with the ages, and we saw it last time. The MKB, well, <sighs> I don't know, double headshots. I mean, headshot plus Monkey King Bar is always fun. It's always fun. Yeah, the procs will be real, just... If he doesn't proc, his damage isn't, like... Crazy strong. I mean, it's still pretty nice just because he attacks pretty fast as well. I mean, it, it got nerfed. I mean, back then it was was really, really horrible. Like, Black Kingba plus the headshot, actually having all mini stuns. Right now, headshot is, I mean, it, they change it so that it only stops the movement, but the attack mini speed stun. As well. What? It should remove, uh, just attack speed gets nerfed as well by the headshot. Yeah, no, but what I, what I mean is like you don't have like double mini stun anymore. You had to have only have the original mini stun on the MKB, and the rest is really just the movement speed. But let's see. At the moment, Balkan Best they go for some sort of split push approach, and to be honest, like with the metamorphosis still up, they're quite fast. But still, I, I think DD they're selling. Okay, guys, they don't have a cliff. Let's just go for it. But never mind that. They're TPing top and Ace. Is, is looking for it because the Chrono is already up and there's the Ravage on so many people. Like, one is already down. Next target is the center, but at the moment he's popping the Crimson Guard. There is the Malefist stun and Wee is trying to get the hell out of there. And even the Black Hole used just for Wee's retreat. He has a Sunder. Does he get it up? Never mind. In the cast animation, he's going down. So, this split push attempt ends at the tier 3 tower. At the same time, however, bottom, we have Haki going for Baby Knight duels. Remember, guys. Still have a H's up, so even if he wins there, he's coming back at the moment. Jobo, he's waiting for his next, his next max missile. But we already bought back, and now the question is, do they get something here? Baby Knight being swapped out, but I don't even know if that helped them in this fight. We have to assassinate. He's gonna finish the Shakira. Now he's gonna finish. Oh my God! Like it's really just we versus those two. But he's being stunned, and now Baby Knight is YOLO. I'm going for it. I'm kiting you to death, and that's it. It's I don't know how many went down in this fight. Seven. Was that two buybacks? It was one only buyback. the one, only the Terror Blade buying back in this case. But So six deaths Jesus. for BBC and that's definitely enough. I mean, they buy back, but without we, without the Metamorphosis being there as well, I don't think they can defend. I guess all the cool... Oh, never oh, mind, they beautiful. get the double the hoofstone. 
But the Ravage will be there. They still get the kill. Oh my god. They killed the sniper, guys. GG. BBC wins. Christ on the run as well. But they don't even need <laughs> the sniper in all just honesty. So it's still more or less GG. They buy back on even more heroes. Stun will not do anything since Ry still had the BKB on. But at least they killed the sniper, man. Well, at the moment, they, they hold the Raxus at least for now, but Blan is in there. First hit bash again here. I mean, there's a repel on the center, and he's quite tanked, but at the moment, he's going for the Shakira, but Blan, oh, standing in all that macro pie is not a good idea. He's angling around. Now, actually, he's going for Levy, but he's gonna get his ultimate off, so quite tanky for now. The Shakira still has the Ice Path holding them maybe in place. The Rex are still standing. I mean, after all, that's what you want to get here, and yeah, they have to retreat, so... DD, this was not how it was supposed to work, and now we were looking for your scepter fish. But no, they're not gonna find anything. So in the end, Balkan Bears, like with massive buybacks. How many buybacks was that? That was the Santa, Haki, Levy, as well as we, the entire team, bought back. Yo, uh, only the Shakira didn't use the buyback by the end of yeah. this. Only Shakira didn't use it, but they hold their axes. I mean, it's still something. It's it's definitely something, and they got about 14,000 XP from that one fight as well with all the kills they had. So, I mean, all the buybacks were like, kind of negated just because they got so much gold since they were so far ahead but even with the fight they are still at almost a 30,000 net worth disadvantage 30k xp as well and now oh, BKB look. from Blan man <laughs> what, what a place to fight. Hill fight this is a typical pop hill fight but it wasn't even fair to be honest i have to say here dd is not playing fair i really thought this is some man fight ban a uh, bland versus like Virginia. i think Blan might have even lost that fight just because the return yeah. was doing quite a lot of damage there <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he still had the double edge and he had the BKB on, plus the return damage. It might have been actually a close call for Plan. That's why I'm calling, like, I don't know, foul play. Simply for the reason that Baby Knight interfered in this fight. I really wanted to see the out the outcome one-on-one. -on -one. But in the end, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, they're going to lose the center and I, I don't know. The, the reason the reason actually Didi didn't finish the game right there is also that they sort of, I don't know, they did not. Never mind. Did you just see that on the pop hill? The Vengeful Spirit was baiting Haki's TP, uh, Haki's Plink. So he plinked up there or he played me on, but Yobo was like, nah, I'm not gonna go for it. So he just plinked out. Uh, well, it was Vengeful. Vengeful, what a support are you? You don't want to fight the enemy Legion Commander, yeah, man. man up. I still criticize his farm. He's not on the red side of the net worth half. But at the moment, look at we and everybody, like they're waiting for Blan somewhat, I don't know, but oh, we have a duel here, but instantly swap out, and Haki, oh my god, just getting obliterated by the sniper who just got swapped out. That's one down, we doesn't even think about going back, Blan actually going for the man fight, we top lane here, this is a definitely easy kill, Blan is gonna finish it before we can even say Thunder, and I think that's pretty much it, one more Rex is going down, there's the ultimate fight the Omni Knight, but it's not gonna change anything with the Ravage and the Black Hole. Never mind, the Black Hole instantly being interrupted. So a small chance there, but Baby Knight is just gonna finish off Petrino. He's trying to hide behind a tree, but no. Did he cancel his own Black Hole there? Center. I, I think he just cancelled his own Black Hole and didn't even activate like PKB. That's what they pulled already ending wise, but this game lasted for way longer than it should have, in all fairness. I mean... And some people, look at the discussion in the chat, some people are actually talking about items and Guys, BKB would not have helped this game. You play against the Black Hole and a Chronosphere. Like, BKB is, is... Unless you count the HP gain by a BKB into it, BKB has no use whatsoever. Either way, that was that was pretty much wrecked, and we have to see. The next draft has to be a bit more confident and creative by BBC. Otherwise, DD is going to have another easy game. I'm quite surprised by that poor performance. Yeah, I mean, DD just correct bans, I guess. Throwing, well, Pakkan Bears off their guard or off their chest safety zone but in any case guys we are heading into game number two of this best of three definitely bbc they have a chance to come back we'll see if they can actually manage to do so but thank you for tuning in hope you enjoy the cast and the game and we will be back with game number two in just a couple of minutes time